Focus is one of the most important parts of tennis. You can be playing fantastically, lose focus for a couple of minutes, lose a break, lose a set, and lose a match. And that's why focus is often the difference between the levels of players. Now, what I want to do in this video is talk about some things and show you some ways that you can start to train and improve your focus that you might not have seen before. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, it'd be fantastic if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it'd be awesome if you could do that as well. So part of the solution for improving your focus is going to be the deliberate practice of the skill of being more focused. You've got to go out into your matches with the intent of having less lapses in concentration. That's going to be important, but it's also only going to take you so far because just like everything else in tennis, there is a physical ability or capability requirement. And here we're talking about the parts of the brain that deal with focus, that control focus. If the parts of the brain that control focus don't work well enough, or they're not efficient enough, or the parts of the brain that feed into it don't work well enough or aren't efficient enough, you're not going to be able to focus in the way that you want when you play tennis. Luckily, the solution is to train and improve the function in these parts of the brain. And it's a very simple thing to do once you understand a little bit about the neurology, because the parts of the brain that deal with focus are also responsible for creating different types of eye movements. If you're interested in the neuro stuff, um, you can kind of Google uh, the prefrontal cortex that's in the frontal lobe and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and you could Google those with eye movements and it'll give you a little bit of information there. Or you also might want to look at some of the research on different types of eye movement and ADHD. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to diagnose or treat or cure any diseases, and I'm not saying that you've got a medical problem. But what I am saying is when we look at the research on ADHD, there are certain eye movements that tend to, when people have got problems with those eye movements, they tend to have more problems with focus and ADHD. So it makes sense that if we do some work to train and improve the function in these eye areas or with these eye movements, we're going to be training those parts of the brain and we can potentially improve how they function. And this is something that I was able to do successfully on myself. I've seen it happen with other people. So I'm very confident that if you work on some of the things that I'm about to show you, it could be very beneficial for your levels of focus when you play as well. So I'm going to show you three different drills. These are three of the drills that I found that are kind of linked within the research. Very simple, but very effective. So the first exercise we're going to be doing is going to be a fast eye switch or a saccade. Fast eye switches are controlled by this area of the brain, so we can train it very effectively using them. To perform eye switching exercises, you need some kind of targets. You could use your thumbs, you could use pens. I like to use tennis balls and use the letters within the logo on the tennis balls. Now, in terms of creating these eye switches, it's really simple. I'm just gonna try and keep my head still and switch between the two targets. And then that's all I'm going to do. And this is something that I want to train in different directions. So horizontally, vertically, diagonally. And I could also do kind of the sides of a square. And I could also do this at different distances because it's the parts of the brain that we're working on training. The more different variations that we work on, the more training effect there's going to be. Now, when you start working with this type of drill, you want to start out fairly slowly with the numbers. So maybe a good starting program would be to do, you know, 20 switches horizontally, 20 switches vertically, 20 switches diagonally. And that's going to be a good starting point for most people. Depending how your system functions, you might need to do a little bit less or you could potentially go a lot higher to challenge things. So that is drill number one, saccades. The second drill we're going to be working on is a pencil push-up. So for this one, you're going to need the pen or the pencil. We're going to be working on the skill of convergence. So convergence is bringing your eyes inwards together. You're going to hold the pen at arm's length, slowly bring it in towards the bridge of your nose. Now the sun is in my eyes, so I might be squinting a little bit and you might not be able to see my eyes perfectly. So I'll place an image down below so you can see what is happening more closely but I'm trying to bring it in. As I do that, my eyes are going inwards together. Now for me, I can go all the way in and still see this target perfectly clearly um, as a single target, but you might find that as you bring this target in towards you, it starts to split in two because your eyes aren't able to fully 
work together. One of the muscles or the parts of the brain that bring the eye in, that perform the skill of convergence, isn't quite doing what it should be doing. And that's why it will split in two, because our eyes are like camera lenses. If that is happening, this is something called convergence insufficiency, or lack of ability to converge. And if you Google that one, that's one of the specific things that they find in people that struggle with focus in some of the research. So definitely gonna be a drill that you can work on. Again, start out nice and small, nice and sensibly. You're just gonna bring it in to the point at which it doubles. If you can go all the way in, then you'll do reps all the way in. Maybe five in each hand is gonna be a good starting point for most people. You can build up from there. If that feels too challenging, you can start with less reps. And obviously, if when you do this, the tip of the pen splits in two, if it splits in two at this distance and you keep on working on it, you want to try and bring it closer and closer to correct this problem, that's gonna be very beneficial for your ability to focus when you play. The final drill that we're gonna be working on is gonna be a static gaze fixation, looking at a target, that isn't moving. So for this one, I like to work on lots of different positions as well. As a bare minimum, working on out in front and the nine different points, or sorry, the eight different points of the compass. Left, right, up, down, and then the different diagonals. And you literally just hold a target there and hold your eyes fixated on that target. Three seconds is a good starting point, but then building up to five, 10, and going a little bit higher, do it directly in front, out to the left, out to the right, down below, up top, and then the different diagonals. And it's gonna be another one of those exercises that targets specific parts of the brain. So this one also targets another very key area of the brain for focus that I haven't mentioned so far. Just letting you know that because it looks like a very simple, boring exercise, but it is very powerful in terms of the area it targets. But those are the three drills that you can start to work on. If you put them together as a little mini program and work on them consistently, it's gonna to start to improve your focus during matches. Okay, so there you have it. Three very effective drills that can help you to improve your focus. But these are just a small number of the different types of drills that you can do to improve focus, concentration, and other aspects of mental toughness when you play. If you would like to learn more about using brain-based training to improve these types of skills within your game, I've created a masterclass that's gonna go into a lot more detail about it. I'll place a link up there, and I'll place a link down there so you can check it out. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be fast, fantastic if you could give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about what we've gone through today, kind of how to implement things or stuff like that, leave me a comment down below. Uh, I'll get back to you as quick as I can, and otherwise I'll catch you next time.